Today's show is sponsored by ExpressVPN, one-click protection for all your devices. Securing yourself could not be easier. Visit expressvpn.com forward slash funhouse. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Film House for this week. I'm your host, Elise. Today, I am joined by James. Hello. As always. And we have a special guest today. Uh, you've seen him on the at the Just for Laughs Festival, Toronto Sketch Fest, Yuck Yucks, Toronto Second City, on Shopify's Curious Business, and now he's the co-host of the Great Canadian Baking Show, and of course, a star of Funhouse's Mall Simulator gameplay. <laughs> uh, as we know it, welcome to the show, Alan Shane Lewis. Hi, thanks for having me again. This is so yeah, much fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- Thanks for coming back. Uh, you inspired a lot of our community with your Mighty Ducks jersey <laughs> in that in the mall simulator gameplay. Yeah. And then uh, and then you like it's weird because I was asking you like, hey, do you want to do Film House? Do you want to talk about movies? What are you into? And you were like, I'm a big Mighty Ducks fan. <laughs> big Mighty Ducks fan. Just like, and, I have another jersey on the way. Actually, I have uh, Goldberg coming in from. <gasps> I'm so excited for that. Like the new one. Like when they like change their jerseys from like that USA whatever mm-hmm. that company was. You know the corporation. Yeah. And yeah. Now they got like the cool. Yeah. The cool colors. Yeah. I got that one coming. I'm, in. I'm so happy. For I'm that. not gonna lie. When it comes to the plot of Mighty Ducks, I really liked when the corporation came in and like revamped their <laughs> image, and I was like, oh, it's sleek. I'm not gonna lie. It's a good look. It's a good what does look. that say about you though? I don't know. They. I mean, whatever design team they they. You know, we could talk all day about corporations being bad, and I'll be on your side. But that doesn't mean that the people. The human beings working in that design team may not have actually put a lot of effort into that logo. Yeah, the Hendrix, they got them all Wheaties. They got them meeting mm-hmm. like Chris Chelios. Like they they, they they were like, you know, getting hands yeah. together. They were putting in work. Chris so. Chelios. Yeah. I killed for Man. that kind of management. <laughs> I haven't heard the name Chris Chelios in like 15 years. <laughs> Does he still Maybe play so hockey? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. He's probably like working in someone's front office. I feel like Chris Chelio somewhere right now just got like a shutter. He's like, someone's speaking about me. <laughs> yeah, he says yeah. no one. No one doesn't hire Chris Chelios, and it's why do you <laughs> speak in so many double negatives, Chris Chelios? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Chelios talks the way Chris Chelios wants. You understand that? <laughs> Chris Chelios Jr. Uh, well, I I definitely want to talk about Mighty Ducks more, but first I wanted to ask you some prying questions about the Great Canadian Baking Show. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's in season four now, and they brought you and Anne Pornell on as hosts, mm-hmm. which is a great move because I'm a big Alan Shane fan. So yeah. any, any work that he does, I'm invested in. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like, h- how big of a deal was it for you to become a host of Great Canadian Baking Show? Because like everybody knows the British one. Yeah, it, great. It was it was huge because like um, I heard of the show. I used to watch it. Um, I wasn't like binging it. I just like kind of like, oh, it's on. And I would kind of like check in on it. So when I got the news, I remember it because it was like pandemic times and I did the audition like months ago. And when I did the audition, it was fun. I had a lot of fun, but I was like, I didn't get it. There's no way I didn't get it. Like, I was just like, that's cool. That's fine. You know, when you walk into or you leave uh, an audition and you're just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's like, I think he made his peace with God. (laughs) You know, it's like (laughs) Lieutenant Dan. That's I Lieutenant Dan everything where I'm like, I made my peace with God. (laughs) That's why I love the Zoom auditions, because like when you finish those, you're just like, and close my computer and. And I'm good. And you don't have to do that, like, Uber ride back of just like, oh, man, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing? I, Is this even a granted, business Uber? I, I haven't had to do many just, like, cold auditions. But I, I'm the opposite where I feel like I'll do an audition. I go, that went really well. Like, I was really prepared. <laughs> and I really felt like, given all the circumstances, that went really well. And then I, it's nothing. I The phone never rings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, no one calls to tell me I didn't get it. No one cares. It, my my audition didn't even resonate enough on the Richter scale for anyone to remember I was there. I did one I, I, audition during quarantine. And it like it felt like it escalated to the point where I, you know, I closed Zoom at the end. And I had, like, a puppet on my hand. And I was like, what happened there? <laughs> just like blacked out like oh what the hell that's Ooh, like nose and i was like why did i why did i let it get? and they and the, the person on the other end is recording those auditions to show people yeah. and cast and you're like mm-hmm. how did i let it get this far <laughs> like what happened I, I had one yesterday where they were like let me just check with the client to make sure we have everything and then all of a sudden the message was you can log off now i was like oh okay so the oh, client had yeah, nothing else <laughs> yeah they got, got enough 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I like lead the league in apologies at auditions. I'm always like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Can I can do it one more time if you want? Like, I'm like so apologetic. I don't know if I'm doing it right. And to the point where I'm just like, they must be like, get this guy the f out of here. Quick, I swear, mm-hmm. Alan. I, oh, yes, yeah, please. Get this guy the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Alan, I'm the same way, and Americans are very critical of it because they think that you're doing it. They don't realize that it's like this ingrained thing into you well, where it's... you've been taught this deprecation. They think that you're doing it because you want to come off as being like modest or something. And it's like, no, I'm just a, a psychopath. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's because you know? Americans never apologize for anything. That's that's one mm. of their major faults. And then the the contrast of that is Canadians apologize almost the Profusely. same way anyone else would say like or um, you know, uh. like it, it, <laughs> I did it. Yeah. But you throw them in there to just to kind of give your your brain space to catch back up with everything. So it's just yeah, Canadians I, were I, I, here's the thing. I will say we're not I don't think we're nice. We're just polite. We're just like uber polite. Like we just like. All the formalities have to be on the table for this conversation to go on. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen like a Canadian like polite off where it's like you open a door for somebody, but they're like, no, after you, no, after <laughs> you. And it's like four <laughs> minutes of this game where you're just like the heat's getting out. Like, that's just kind of like who we are. We just have to be like, I have to make sure that this stranger who I'll never see again does not hate me right yes. now. Like, I have it's, to come in with this energy. It's the complete opposite for me again, because if I, I will open a door for someone and then be like, after you, and they go, no, I insist, then they go, fine, fuck off, and then I close the door on them. You know? And then you just lock it a little bit? Yeah, yeah you there have it one is. shot. Well, it's also the kind of thing where somebody comes over to your house and you're like, I need them to be as comfortable as possible, seven glasses of water, anything they want. But then if I was going to someone's house growing up, my mother was like, you take nothing from them and you expect nothing. (laughs) (laughs) If you're bleeding and they offer you a bandage, you said you say no. If I had a dime for every single time I sat down to dinner at a Canadian household and someone else at the table got up to go get paper towels or napkins or something to put underneath the napkins that were already on my table. (laughs) I would uh, I'd be a very rich man. My my, my friend uh, Ryan Dillon has this amazing joke. I'm going to butcher it, but I'll try it. It's just like this. He's like from the East Coast of Canada. And like over there, they just offer you a cup of tea like all the time. But it's not like a real offer. It's just like cup of tea. I'm like, no, nah, it's OK. And then that's it. It's like no one's ever yeah. taken you up on it. It's like cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're like, oh, um, <laughs> Do I don't have, have tea. tea? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could swish it in my mouth. Yeah, I can boil some Gatorade. Is that is that what you want? Well, speaking of boiling, yeah, can you I'll, boil water, Alan, or were you a complete hack on this show? I, yeah, I'm, I mean, you're not competing. Cur- I'm genuinely curious <laughs> what it was like being on the show. I'm a fan. I've never, I've only watched the the uh, um, the British one, um, hmm. but I'm a big fan of the show because I feel like it's a great reality competition show that focuses on the craft of people and not the drama of people and that's those yeah. are my preferred shows my competition shows even even the competitiveness like when someone gets eliminated it's like yeah well it's a bad week you know it's, <laughs> done. it's a bad week but um but i so i'm curious what it was like for you um being there and kind of experiencing that firsthand yeah it was it's crazy how warm and kind everybody was from like day one like that's like one of the bigger sets that i've been on uh, in my career and to to walk onto that set first off and like be like oh no what am i gonna do and then just everyone be like it's okay we're just it's mm-hmm. chill here baby like it was just so nice and um yeah. the bakers when they first met us they were like oh my god it's them we're like you don't know who we are <laughs> it's like they, <laughs> you're so nice <laughs> thank you mm-hmm. but like it's you i'm like more amazed by you you have way more skill here uh so yeah it was just like a crazy warm experience everyone was like super nice and yeah, like to this day, like I'll still message some of the bakers and be like, yo, how's it going? And just talk to them about whatever. So they're really cool yeah. people. Oh, uh, did you did you get to eat their baking after the fact? Sometimes. That's the thing, because it was COVID, right? So oh, um, yeah. there was like a lot of like steps in order to eat something. And like it, we the first couple like uh, shoots, like we couldn't just like at all. Like It was just like if there was an opportunity, like on the Royal Tour, when we go with like Bruno and Kyla, we would get to eat. That was like the only time I got to eat. But uh, I found a way as the weeks progressed that if the bakers ask me, hey, would you like to taste this? Then I get to taste something like any like jam jilling or like any filling or like mm-hmm. that. But it took like a full 10 minute shutdown of like everything. They have to go get like my uh, my bu- bucket of spoons, get the spoons, bring my hands, <laughs> clean them up, shoot the cameras again, eat it again, p- pause, 
throw away the spoon and then go back into it. So now uh, it's my understanding that that was in your rider pre COVID that you would have the bucket of spoons. Correct? Yes, they don't. They don't leave me. I need my bucket of spoons. If you give me a box of spoons. I will tear that fucking throw it. Throw it away. Throw it in a PA's face. Yeah. How dare you? Does it have a quarter on it? <laughs> you know why? Quarters? I, quarters killed my father. I picture a tiny, trembling production assistant covered in small, oval sized welts because Alan didn't get his bucket of spoons. Just refusing to leave my trailer until I get my, my bucket of spoons. <laughs> no! So get them now! Trailer. <laughs> yeah, demand it, then realizing that you don't have a trailer. <laughs> he just locked the door to the tent. It's not him. Yeah. It's not his area. Why is he doing that? <laughs> He's been in the women's restroom for 45 minutes. <laughs> He's using no the hand dryer again. I can hear it. <laughs> He thinks we can't hear him over. Uh, <laughs> That's another thing, you, too. Having the audio on me, I keep forgetting that. And, like, I don't know. I kept getting, like, bubble guts. That's maybe too much. But, like, no, I would no, get please. bubble guts. I would bubble guts and be like, uh, I got 1080. I forgot what it's called. I mean, you got to use the washroom. And then I would be in the washroom and I'd be like, oh, I didn't turn my mic off. <laughs> just like, yeah. you're, just you're like, in there realizing you muttered about that woman you murdered. Like, <laughs> like, oh, them and I got away with it too. There were no yeah. meddling kids at all. Oh, shit. Yeah. Audio. <laughs> Curses. Yeah, I, I've been there. And I also am someone with a very sensitive constitution. So I've been in situations where I, I have desperately like run past the sound engineer and, and been like, you're going to turn that off, right? <laughs> you're not going to hear it, right? Hit record. Yeah. <laughs> don't listen uh, please don't I'm loud. did a you co-hosted with ann fornell did you guys mm. know each other from the comedy scene beforehand yeah we uh worked at second city together so that was crazy enough that um because i we had we i had a day of chemistry test so we had a bunch of people coming through so it was a bunch of um a couple of my friends and people i didn't know people from like the, this hour is 22 minutes so it was a fun day it's pretty much like just getting to play pretend with like a bunch of cool people. And uh, yeah, me and Anne already knew each other from before. We've, you know, been each other in the scene a couple of times. So it was just like natural instantly when it when it came down to when I got the word that it was her. I was like, oh, fucking sweet. All right. Because mm -hmm. like Anne's comedy is like very similar to mine. Like she does like the weird voices and like doing a lot of these like little fun <laughs> things. And yeah, we had a, a just just cracking each other up on set the entire time. That's awesome. The, I Just like, I guess getting into like the making of a show like that it always like you the hosts are so important for so many reasons because they are like kind of the voice they're like your voice as the viewer where they're like talking over the narration and stuff and they're also the ones who are like excited about the food they don't have to be critical all they have to be is like excited about what they're making but then yeah. every single time it's like did you ever get tired of going like coming up with a bit for 30 minutes remaining or like any like <laughs> I always think about those shows that always has like all right, we have to do some sort of bit for the beginning and we have yeah. to do a 30 minute bit. Like, were you guys just like, all right, what do you want to do for 30 minutes? You pretend to inflate me like a balloon and then I'll say 30 minutes. Right <laughs> no, it was, uh, we have like these amazing producers in our ear uh, who would just like tell us like, all right, now say this one here. And Amy, who was like our writer on the show, she like had some fun ones like beforehand, but sometimes we just get to like make them up. The best was making up just like, like horrible, horrible puns and seeing the bakers just go, <sighs> Yeah. Just as they're yeah. making. That's how you know you did a good one. You're like, oh, that's a solid pun that everyone was yeah. over it immediately. Yeah. Like they just don't even want me to repeat it so the audio is proper. Like that's how they're you know like, it's a good pun. I'm fighting for my livelihood over here and you're making that. <laughs> yeah. Fucking stupid. Yeah. And jokes, you, boys, making all the jokes. <laughs> do you remember any of them? Oh, oof, I, I made so many. Uh, there was a lot of crumb ones. I remember that. I think I love making. There's no thing as a crummy bread front. Like I did like that like 50 <laughs> times just in different variations. Just just yeah. oh, plug and playing the words around differently. I want to watch it so bad. Yeah. Uh, I wish they put out the outtakes and whatnot. They put out some of it like earlier for like promo, but I want to see mm -hmm. the rest of that B footage. Or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did see the promo where it's like they have you flubbing the line. And were you like, God damn it. No, <laughs> like... I was acting. 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 They're like, you have to mess this one up. And I was like, all right, that's where I'm a Viking right there. Messing up words. I'm real good at that. So that was, uh, yeah, that was fun to flub that on purpose. Oh, that's awesome. Um, well, I'm, I'm so happy that you got the gig. I think you're perfect for it. And I can't wait to finally watch it when it comes to Netflix in six years. Uh, from Canada. Yeah, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> I hope that licensing goes through. I want I want some some American people to enjoy the amazing bakes that our ten bakers got to make this season on CVC and CVC Gem. 
nice. Very nice. Pro- <laughs> I know where my plug. condoms are. <laughs> if we ever get to go back to Canada again, if the world ever kind of gets back to normal, we get to go back to Canada again, then we can bring a laptop and then we can access Netflix there and then see if we can find it at some point <laughs> in some way in some other place. But well, CBC Gem. Yeah. Alan just, just told us. Just cross the border. Into Niagara yeah. Falls and just it's okay. This is all we need. And then just get that internet, that sweet Canadian <laughs> I, I, Wi-Fi. I'm just curious, and I know I know at least you have other things we want to talk about, but I'm just curious. Please, did you get any sort of like baking? Like, did you walk? Or, number one, did you have any like chef culinary experience going into it? And then number two, did you come out of it and you're like, I actually, you know, watching them make so like 50 cakes, like I kind of actually think maybe I could do it myself. I, this is the thing. I used to like, I used to be like, cause I'm the youngest of, uh, I have two older sisters and like, I pretty much had to like amuse myself as a kid sometimes. Like if they were like tired of playing with me. So I would just like bake and like make, like I used to make like cookies out of like old cookies. I'm like, these are my favorite cookies. I'll crumble them up and make new cookies. They didn't work out, <laughs> nice. but I used to like do that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, had, when we got the magic bullet, I would make like, just like muffins from scratch and all these like fun things. But uh, later in my life, I just, I just don't have the patience. I lost all of it. So mm-hmm. I don't bake as much. I like just order Uber eats and I'm just nice. like, I'm the worst person to be in a pandemic with. Cause I'm just like, what do you really want to eat right now? And I'm just like, you want to eat cake at 2 AM? I'm just like, let's do it. And I'll just like yeah, rush it nice. in like any whim, you know? Yes. So. We all need something to look forward to right now. And as far <laughs> as I'm concerned, whatever you're going to eat for dinner that any particular day is like the thing that I look forward to. Mm hmm. Um, and I, so when James is like, can't. "How about I? How about I make us up some chicken with sink water and <laughs> crushed broccoli?" All right, here's I'm the like, thing. "Oh, how high? Hold how on. high can I jump?" Here's the thing. You, you mock, but people love my sink water chicken. It's been sitting broccoli. in the sink. Pe- it's been marinating it. in the sink. Sink water chicken is a Willem's family staple and i will pass it on to whoever comes after me and so on and so forth sink yeah. water chicken can named, i see a picture of this sink water chicken it's it's named after sink water mississippi um where people there would put their marinate their chicken in water from the sink yeah. it's an old family recipe yeah it's real good real yummies yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I like cooking. I like doing all that stuff. It's just like if you just don't do that and save yourself 50 minutes, you could get a meal that's, that's you know, true. not the warmest, but, you know, yeah. it's exactly <laughs> it's, what you want. The, the, the closest thing that I could think for me is that, like, I watch a lot of cooking videos on YouTube, um, mm. mostly like like here's this like korean waffle pizza or whatever and it's just someone in a restaurant in you know south korea somewhere silently making a korean waffle pizza and i'll just watch stuff like that for hours but when i watch it part of me in the back of my brain goes why don't i do that and then i realize it's because <laughs> i don't own a store that makes korean waffle pizzas <laughs> where they have all the necessary equipment to do that and they have like jars that squirt out the pizza sauce in the exact portion that they need but still in the yeah. back of my head i always go maybe why don't I just do that? And then when approached with the actual hurdle of being able to cook well, I'm quickly spiked back down to earth. I, I do the same thing with uh, this this guy on Instagram I follow. It's like over the fire grill account. Mm-hmm. It's not, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like a grill, like outdoor kind of grilling thing. And I always save his recipes. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make this. This garlic butter shrimp looks amazing. But I don't own a grill or a backyard. Yeah. So I'm just like, what am I doing here? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what game is this? It's not going to work in the oven. <laughs> but one day. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm more like, I'm an intellectual. I can't concern concern myself with the mundanities of everyday life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like someone else will procure my meals for me, and then, but then I'm like, Google, play Riverdale season four, episode three. <laughs> like, I do not, off the I do not have time. I do not have time to cook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> someone else must. I'm Are you on busy. season four of Riverdale? N- no, I watched the first season of Riverdale, and then because I was actually a big Archie comics. fan, fan when i was a kid mm. i bought archie comics you know all the time all the time and like the uh, no... loblaws right like in the like yeah. the little lineup thing yeah i just okay. purchased yeah. like it all the double on, digest this ain't a canadian joke gameplay you can't mention <laughs> loblaws <laughs> well where else would you buy your comics from i mean yeah all I, I will say it, if we went to loblaws you know it was, it was a special occasion loblaws is a little more pricey 
Um, but yes, they at a time from Loblaws, I would have purchased the comics. I had a drawer for my Archie <laughs> comics. So when they were making Riverdale, I, I thought, I like that they're doing this because it sounds really stupid. And yeah. so I watched the first season and, and was way into it, but then lost track. Though I, they're doing this time jump now. Where they're, yeah. Have you heard about this? No. I'm like, I went to season three and I was like, magic? Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> There's magic. There? <laughs> well, they're doing a seven year time jump. So now oh, all wow. the, the characters are like, they're out of high school. Like Betty's an FBI agent now. Um, Archie is like a <laughs> pro football player. It's It just got bananas. You gotta wrap things up in, in two seasons. I, and no television uh. show should exist. No narrative television show should exist for more than, I'm gonna just toss it out here, 12 episodes. 12 episodes max, <laughs> and you wrap it up. And, we and we're on. done. We're yeah. done. There's no more story to tell. I, I, I have a question. Archie Comics, are they comic books? In what in what way do you mean? Like the original? Would you define them as comic books? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. The, the... I think yeah? so. You mean because they don't, despite the fact that they don't have like superheroes and they're about yeah. like finding boyfriends and stuff? Yeah. Sure. I would if you, someone was reading that and like, I love comic books. Oh, what do you read? Archie's mostly. That's about it. Would you be like, <laughs> mm, that don't count? Or would you be like, okay, I'll allow it. I, I mean, it is very telling of the person if that's their answer. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't gatekeep them from be, saying that they are in the world of comic books. Okay, okay Alan, <laughs> let's let's RP here. I I tell you, hey, oh yeah, I read comics. Yeah. I mean, oh, you what, ask, what, yeah. What comics do you read? Blondie. Oof. Blondie. You know, Blondie. Yeah. yeah, her, her <laughs> yeah, husband. Was like, oh, so yeah. Yeah. Two just, panels, I, but I, I two cut them out. I cut them out. I tape them into a notebook so I get, I get the full experience. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a little Lulu man myself, so that's just who I am. Oh. <laughs> little Lulu. Yeah. Little Lulu. We Is that love you print? just the same. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like she might have like passed away from like polio or something like that. I didn't read the final chapters of that. Was Lulu, Blondie's little husband Lulu. Dagwood? Dagwood, yeah. Dude, it was Dagwood. The husband, yeah. That's it. Lil Lulu definitely question. died from an eradicated disease. Yes. Yeah, like something so preventable. Just 50 yeah. years difference. <laughs> <laughs> she, if she um, could talk to anti vaxxers now, she would have something to say. She's that's like, special print. <laughs> I didn't make it past nine years old, and you're choosing not to vaccinate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. uh, you know, we'll cut out 10% off on your first iron lung. <laughs> Just in the back. Uh, I wanted to get your takes on the trailer that came out for Cru Cruella, the yes. upcoming Disney movie starring Emma Stone, where she plays a, it's an origin story for Cruella DeVille. Mm -hmm. Um, because I never want you to work with Disney ever, Alan. <laughs> I, want, I really, really want you to say something that's just going to right now, right here, uh, mm -hmm. Disney just is making all the right moves. They're just smart people <laughs> in the right places. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, it's so weird. I, 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 I know I love James the, has a lot of thoughts, but maybe Nikki yeah. can roll it, roll in the trailer for us so we can see a little bit. Yeah, it's just everything doesn't need to be an origin story. Like I never saw Maleficent, mm -hmm. and I I'm actually surprised I said Maleficent because I have never said it properly before. I'm like Maleficent. Like I always mess it up, <laughs> but. Yeah, I don't know. I I do I do enjoy is some Stanley Tucci I think in there. I'm like I liking the that. Is oh no, it's, I, I think it's Mark no, Strong. It's Mark, Mark, it's Strong? Mark Strong. Ah! Mark Strong. British, they should just, British British just tough admit Stanley to Tucci. be the same person already. Yeah, yeah. I I had a theory years ago that Mark Strong was getting all the Tucci roles because mm. I love the Tucci. That residual like, Tucci. Yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> um, I will say this, I. At least when when they're going back to revisit all their old properties and charge people again for movies that already exist, I think I would prefer this approach to mm. just having remade 101 Dalmatians. Um, so I'm grateful for this. Maleficent actually, I think, was the one that like really kicked off that trend. And I, I, Maleficent wasn't a good movie, but I appreciated the fact that it wasn't just Sleeping Beauty. Like they didn't just yeah. make a Sleeping Beauty movie again, but then they did Cinderella afterwards. And then they were like, all right, screw it. We're just going to, we're just going to make Lion King again. Who cares? You know, like, yeah. we're just going to make Aladdin again. Let's do a worse <laughs> version of Mulan. You know, like they just basically kind of did that. So at least Cruella de Vil is that. That being said, I just, 
this age we're in where we've confused like the charisma and appeal of a villain with actually liking them like the line mm. is blurred and and I don't think organizations like Disney and stuff or Warner Brothers do it as well as say professional wrestling does like <laughs> professional wrestling is like so silly that it can have someone that you like absolutely hate that you hate so much that you love them and then they become the good guy but I don't think that like making a movie I, it's just impossible for me to watch that trailer and think but she wants to murder dogs like i don't yeah. care if, yeah. if they're like don't you understand she's a fashionista and her sense yeah. of style transcends what the people of the time believe i'm like yeah she wants to murder dogs like i can't get past that aspect <laughs> and, and like baby dogs specifically yeah. she's the like smaller the better a, she said yeah. yeah it's like that's the fresh that's the fresh fur that's where you mm -hmm. want yeah, no. Yeah, the dog, the veal of dogs. She <laughs> she calls then, them puppies. And then I think what happens is ultimately because you know the movie will come out and then you'll find out oh they'll they'll have to do something because there's no way they can have a main character that wants to murder dogs as their motivation. So they'll find an excuse to make it seem that oh she didn't want to murder dogs. It was some sort of other confused thing that we the audience mistook as wanting to murder dogs except that that just makes that the original character you might as well have just done someone else because Cruella Deville's defining trait was that she really wanted to murder dogs <laughs> I don't know I think the the Oz the Great and Powerful movie that came out like several years oh, yeah. ago kind of did the same thing where it was like Mila Kunis is the wicked witch of the west before she's evil but they still have to make it end up that she is green and evil. Well, and there's like literally a five minute turn in the movie where she goes, ah, I'm angry and green. Well, and then you're like, <laughs> yeah, that was a bad approach, because if you look at Wicked, you know, the musical mm -hmm. based on the book by Gregory Maguire, mm -hmm. those are two very successful instances where they took the villain, the Wicked Witch of the West and made her a empathetic and likable and interesting character mm -hmm. beyond because in the Wizard of Oz, you don't really see or know too much about the Wicked West, Witch of the West. Yeah, yeah. there's and they took that and made it interesting. Yeah, there's for so, sure wait, an air of mystery. Oz was just yeah. bad. Yeah, I think that the one thing that the filmmakers uh, of Cruella are putting out that you guys are both missing that that we live in a society. That's oh, right? that's okay. True. And when you live in a society, I see. yeah, I have no way to fill up, finish <laughs> the sentence. Yeah, I don't, it's just it's <laughs> yeah, it really speaks to it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is the one thing that everyone's memifying is is joke. They're, they joke of jokered Cruella a bit yeah yeah it's yeah it's something about just taking their first name and then making that the title of the movie and like this is before the Balboa there was Rocky and yes. or before Rocky there was Balboa and just like doing this kind of weird thing where they, they they just like uh try to create this origin that like nobody specifically asked for and trying right. to give this character new depth but I'm like I don't know it's just once again it's just more of a cash grab and I will watch this movie I won't watch it in theaters I will watch it on Disney plus at three o'clock in the morning while tweeting that's just exactly what's <laughs> gonna happen I know what's gonna happen with this I I will say this and I don't know if it I don't know if this diminishes my the value of my opinion I mean basically everything I says says say diminishes the value of my opinion but the, it wasn't until this trailer that I realized that Deville is devil <laughs> <laughs> and it's because they literally had to drive a car that says devil up to my face <laughs> in the shot in the movie. I never put that Cruella DeVille as it's just devil separated. I, I would put some respect on this movie if the, if her going up in flames was practical effect and not that CGI. <laughs> That's that. I would put some respect on it. Uh -huh. And I also I love that there's a shot of like dogs glaring at an evil person. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, are the dogs bad? Like, I don't understand. Are they? I don't know. Are the dogs like we know well, about her? I don't know if you I humans can, know yet. Yeah. From what I can take from this trailer, there's an, there's a woman in it that's even eviler than Cruella. Mm -hmm. How? Who, how could you be crueler than the devil? I don't see how that's named possible. Cruella. Yeah, yeah. Um. And yeah, they were also kind of setting her up for for, for failure with that moniker. But I don't know. if you told me this was a hot topic commercial, I would believe you. I just, Basically. It's, just, it's just when when 101 Dalmatians came out, it I wasn't in the room, obviously, but I feel like a bunch of the writers sat around and said, how can we make the most evil seeming antagonist ever? Because okay. it's literally like pure good. 
these beautiful dogs that only love like only have love and kindness in their heart versus the most evil thing ever how do we like it's good versus bad in the most black and white way possible and then 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 several years later decades later someone comes in and goes like but what if and i'm like maybe this isn't the right what if i <laughs> i, I want to know like what's what's in like the like the back burner or like the future like because we're gonna get more of these like there's no way we're yeah. gonna stop this i want to know what's yeah. the next origin story like they're, well they're gonna do is it like um, the mice from like cinderella is it i guess we've already been to cinderella so we don't have to do that I, oh, well, yeah. they, they have the little mermaid movie coming but i wouldn't be surprised if there was a spin-off that it, ursula that, oh yeah. ursula and you know what? I'd watch that. I Me would watch too. That. Ursula is the most choose, interesting character. We're going to watch all these. That's the truth of that. We're going to watch all of yeah. them. But I'm going to have my arms crossed and going, mm, I can't believe I paid $30 plus my monthly subscription for this. <laughs> I yeah, think the, the best. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I just, yeah, the 30 bucks thing. I, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I watched it on like bootleg. Oops, Disney. Uh, <laughs> and it, it wasn't as like sharp. So I had to turn it off. So I was like, oh. I'm, I'm a prison yeah, to eight, to 1080p. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think my favorite tweet that I've seen about this movie was, um, do you, do you want to know how I got these scarves? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> it was great. It yeah. was, I thought that was just quality, uh, comedy. Yeah. Can I tell good. you who is behind the creative behind this movie? Cause it might blow your mind and, and make you see it differently. F. Scott Fitzgerald. Spielberg. Well, uh, Glenn Close is an executive producer. Okay, well, that's only because mm. she owns the likeness rights to Cruella de Vil. <laughs> uh, Craig Gillespie is the director, and he directed The New Fright Night, Lars and the Real Girl, and I, Tonya. Oh, okay. And there are six writers attached to it. Tony McNamara, who wrote The Favorite, which I thought was excellent. Okay. Yeah, but that sounds to me like they had a script. And then Emma Stone said, all right, I want this person that I trust to come in. Yeah. And give it a pass. OK. So. Yeah. Uh, Kelly Marcel wrote a uh, saving Mr. Banks. Uh, okay. Disney. Propaganda. Aline Brosh McKenna wrote the devil wears Prada. Oh. Jeff Damn, Jeff but Butterworth. Like there's are, lots of these, talented people behind it. Yeah, yeah. But when when all those talented people are just inside of a machine turning sure. a gear, that's very specific. So we brought in the Devil Wears Prada writer to do a pass because this is a movie about fashion. And this person once wrote a movie about fashion. We brought in this other person who wrote a, a movie related to Disney stuff because they we like them from Disney stuff. And then we brought and in. And they're all at the someone, behest of studio notes. Mm. It, and they, they're well, they're all just dealing to to use a baking metaphor with the same dough. And it doesn't matter because <sighs> if the yeast is bad, you can't doesn't matter what you do with it because it's you're still just working the same dough. Yeah. Alan hated that audio listener. Yeah. You can't tell, but he's just just filled with rage. Yeah. You can see it in his face. There's, this, there's steam. <laughs> there's steam coming out of my proofing drawer, which is my head. That's what I call my head. <laughs> No, I, here's the thing. You just kind of sold me on this movie because I'm like, okay. I, I kind of do that when it comes to movies where I'm like, okay, who wrote this? What did you work on? And I go through the list. And I'm like, all right, I might I might enjoy this movie. And I come in with that kind of energy. And I'm some, most times I have a good time. So I think, I don't know. I, I And I agree, I agree to James too as well. Like, it's the idea of just like, yeah, they're just kind of turning it and churning it out as part of a machine. But like, I don't think it can pass through that many hands and not be at least like, Okay, if I'm like super duper baked, I'll have a fun time. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yes. I we're definitely at a point though, and I think I think watching stuff at home and like streaming services have definitely lowered our tolerance because we can eat a pot brownie and <laughs> like 35 <laughs> minutes before the movie starts and then and then be like, "You know what? Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom wasn't that bad. But you also don't remember any characters' names and you don't remember what city you were in when you watched it. You yeah. Know, like, um, but yeah, yeah, I'm just, this is, this is, this feels to me like the machine of, of movie making and less the inspiration of movie. This is, there will be no Paddington 2, I will tell you that. <laughs> Paddington 2, Electric Boogaloo. Now, I, I watched yeah. Cats on an edible and I had a fun time in the theater. I was I was like, I think that might have been like the second last movie I saw in theaters. And uh, I saw it on a date with my with my girlfriend at the time. 
well, girlfriend at the time, same girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like our early stages of like uh, pre pandemic uh, and we were both on edibles, and we were just I was I was dying because she saw it before. I was like, what is what is happening? What is <laughs> yeah. this is this is what's this is so weird. Like, it's like when you if you guys I don't know if you guys have ever been to like a comedy show like I, I at comedy shows I will laugh at things that I find funny like the comics if they're being funny and like mm-hmm. the awkward moment of what they just created like I find like you and I have a very distinct oh, yeah. laugh I'll be like in the back one like to moments of like what is happening this is mm-hmm. this is cuckoo bananas so yeah. when I watched that movie I came in with that I was just like this is so weird and I don't know what's happening and there's some choices that are like being made and why are these choices being made why is Sir yeah. Ian McKellen lapping up milk with his tongue this is like so <laughs> odd so I, I i i can enjoy uh hardcore crap as long as uh uh i'm on my 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 uh my legal weed Is legal like weed here in Canada. <laughs> <Yeah>. he looked <laughs> directly in the camera like he didn't need to but he did <laughs> my favorite thing about cats i saw it twice in theaters stone cold sober was that you're watching it and you're like what what is this? But with the exception of certain things like Ian McKellen lapping up milk, like there, there's a few things like there. Most of it is stuff that has already existed and made so much money for decades. Like <laughs> when people came out of that movie, it was just one cat would step forward and sing a song about its name. And I was like, and it's existed to the <laughs> for massive four years. success that it, it's one of the most successful properties of all time and has been for decades and you are only realizing how insane <laughs> this is now that's what i loved about it yeah I, I i also enjoyed lay twins dancing about in there and they like were wearing sneakers for some reason i was like what why are they got <laughs> why are they the only cats wearing shoes what's going on you know they earned that yeah. <laughs> well uh, i'm glad we got to the bottom of cruella it's it could be good and it could be bad we don't know Uh, We're going to take a word from our sponsors and be right back. Bienvenue, salut mes amis. In case you don't speak French, that means, hello, welcome my friends. You can learn it from Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. Uh, One of my goals for the new year is to learn a new language, and Babbel has made the whole process addictively fun and easy with bite-sized lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I've used used it to brush up on some of the Spanish that I took in 10th grade Spanish class, and it has been bueno to say the least. (laughs) Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. You can do it while you're brushing your teeth. You can do it while you're walking your dog. It's real easy. Unlike the infamous language classes you took in high school, as I pointed out, Babbel designs their courses with practical real-world conversations in mind, things you'll get to use in everyday life. Other language apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. So start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, you can purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, and you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of just three. So go to Babbel.com and use promo code FILMHOUSE. That's Babbel.com, code FILMHOUSE, H-A-U-S, for an extra three months free. Babbel, language for life. Thank you. Hey, everybody. I want to tell you a bit about HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. It's the service that gives you fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. So skip those trips to the grocery store. Hey, we're in a pandemic, so you're going to, you're going to want to minimize those anyway. HelloFresh offers 25 plus recipes each week featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients. So you'll never get bored. You'll always have something new to make. And it offers flexibility so you can customize your orders every week. You can change your delivery days or food preferences, skip a week when you need to. It's that easy. It's all about easy meal solutions where you might spend you know, 20 minutes making a really, really great meal as opposed to an hour or more. Um, I, in, I use HelloFresh. James and I have, have gotten it and cooked with it. And it's really nice because we don't overbuy on ingredients. We don't buy ingredients that we, you know, we'll use a spice once and then never use it again. Um, it also gives us a lot of variety. Um, we end up making meals with it that we normally would have never thought to make. So it, it's kind of a, an eye opener to as to, you know, what you could be enjoying in your mealtime. 
Right now, if you go to HelloFresh.com slash 10 filmhouse, that's one zero filmhouse, and use code 10 filmhouse, one zero filmhouse, you'll get 10 free meals, including free shipping. So again, that's HelloFresh.com slash 10 filmhouse and code 10 filmhouse for 10 free meals, including free shipping, which is why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh. That's what's for dinner. <laughs> Thank you, HelloFresh. And we're back. Back. Quack. 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 Can I just say Quack. real quick, Quack. please? Quack. Quack. What? I looked it up. Blondie's maiden name, because because she married Dagwood. So Blondie, her their last name was Bumstead, which I didn't know. So it's Blondie and Dagwood Bumstead. But her maiden name was Boopadoop. Which I oh, thought was you wrong. interrupted our quack. <laughs> please, <laughs> please continue with the quacking. Quack, <laughs> quack, 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 quack. Yeah, quack. <laughs> so yeah, we just that. If you're not familiar with the quack, that's uh, from the Mighty Ducks franchise. It's a power, power, powerful moment mm -hmm. that we see in I think all three of the films. There's a quack at some type yeah. that leads to, if I'm correct, Alan. Yeah, and then they follow it up with the flying V. Um, in some cases, uh, wait, is Alan's this a Mighty really... Ducks TV show? Yes, oh, oh. Alan, are you seeing this for the first time? Yeah, what? <gasps> oh, oh my wow. god, Shocking. when did this come out? Okay, so this comes out. This is oh my god, I can't believe this. March 26th on Disney Plus, the Mighty Ducks Game Changers is I can't believe because you're a big number, you're a huge Mighty Ducks fan. This is what an unveiling, what a first on Film House. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, oh my god, okay, so I, I had a lot. Had a lot of ideas for Mighty Ducks 4. It, 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 it's about Joshua Jackson going back to Minnesota, uh, <sighs> teaching a new school, uh, a, a new class, a new generation. Mm -hmm. Jaden Smith was supposed to be in it, but he's too old now. Uh, and eventually there's going to be a game where like the kids are like not believing in themselves. They don't want to play anymore. And then they bring back the original cast in to play a game with everybody. And then Gordon <sighs> Bombay shows up at the end. It was, it was the perfect movie. But I, I will accept this. I will watch this March 26th. I will be there. Don't I post think that I th theory on Reddit. Someone will burn you down. For yeah. That's what happened to James with his Iron Man 3 <laughs> theory. But, uh, Let's just move on. Were you, I, I Trevor Slattery say, was your idea? I got... I, we, don't worry about it. I had an amazing <laughs> idea for a sequel. It was perfect. And then I posted it on Reddit mistakenly. And then everyone told me it was terrible. <laughs> 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 you know what? Um, if they were any good, they'd be in Disney making Cruella prequel that's movies. True. They'd so. be one of the 25 yeah. writers working on Cruella right now. I agree that your concept for My Next 4 is a perfect film, and I think it could still be made. Uh, I would say that, the, that this series is probably just a speed bump in the road on the way to your Mighty Next 4 concept. The plot of this one, I'll, I'll read it to you here. Now a powerhouse in its division, the Mighty Ducks junior hockey team is selective about who makes the cut. After being kicked out, a 12-year-old boy named Evan, at the urging of his mother, forms a new hockey team of underdogs with the help of the Ducks' original coach, Gordon Bombay. Emilio's back? Wow. They got Emilio for a, a Disney series? Damn. Yeah. That's good. You know, I thought he would have been busy too, but it turns out he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's busy just like living up uh, that uh, that Estevez lifestyle, you know. That, that, that's expensive. Yeah, that sheen money. The sheen that, money. The glowing sheen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because his dad's so, Martin Sheen. Yeah. And, so and of it course, feels like it's plot wise Carlos. pretty similar to the first Mighty Ducks movie, right? Like a bunch of ragtag kids play hockey thanks well, to Emilio in Estevez. The right? first movie, Emilio Estevez has a DUI, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty oh, yeah. dark. It's kind of dark. <laughs> And then he, he like, like yeah, it's quacks like at his boss. He's like, quack, quack, Mr. Ducksworth. And he's like losing yeah. his mind. He's like, that's this is this is a man like, you know, driving his career off the cliff. This is a different type of movie. And then he it's has just to do like happy. service. Yeah. And then wasn't he also like, didn't he he growing up, he had a dream to be a hockey player. But that's mm -hmm. sort of he, he instead like became corporate. Came a suit. <laughs> the thing we he all hate. Suit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like how so, in this TV series, like the Mighty Ducks franchise has beat like has done like that Batman thing of like live long enough to see yourself become the villain, you know, and they mm -hmm. become yeah. the deal in themselves. <laughs> yeah. This is interesting. I'm on board. I, th I think if they could have gone in a different direction, they just call it Ducks. Right. <gasps> and it's a gritty, dark, gritty take <laughs> on, on the Mighty Ducks franchise. Um, 
serial killer escapes prison <laughs> and, <See>. and then <laughs> lands he lands in a small town and then it's very similar to the beginning of great expectations he's found by a kid who brings him bread and water and then in exchange he teaches the kid to play hockey but mm. turns out the kid kills animals and is also a serial killer and then they form a, a team called the ducks of a bunch of the really demented kids around town and it's because that when they first found each other they murdered some a whole bunch of ducks together and so you're gonna get down voted on reddit logo, i actually put logo. it on reddit they love it it's upvoted. oh they love it <laughs> yeah as long as you hey sometimes when you post it in the right places you, you know you'll find an audience yeah um, uh there, there was something in your concept, Alan, the, the Joshua Jackson element, which we haven't seen in the trailer and it hasn't been hinted at, but I am really curious if that's going to be a surprise cameo in this show. Oh, yeah, for yeah sure. I, I figured for you, sure. you, if you're calling uh, Emilio Estevez's phone and Joshua Jackson's phone, Joshua Jackson's going to pick up first. So that's who you lead with. You bring in that, you know, <laughs> Dawson's Creek, we're having a fun time, bring him in there. And then Emilio Estevez is that sweet, you know. Right at the end, you go, whoa! And then you get Keenan Thompson wants to come back and do a knuckle puck. Why the fuck not, you know? Get Aaron Lore in there to, like, some Bash Brothers with Portman, you know, Dean Portman and uh, I forgot the other guy's name. But uh, Foggy, oh, Foggy I, Nelson. Yeah. Bless Can his heart. Can I tell you, I, I never liked uh, Keenan in the movie. Like, I, I fucking love Keenan Thompson so much. He's one of my favorite performers ever just because of, like this reputation he's built on SNL for being this sort of uh, Swiss army knife where any, any time you hear anyone talk about him on SNL, they're like, Keenan is the secret weapon. If something needs like love, a sketch needs some love and you know that Keenan's in it, you know, it's going to be okay. Like everybody just speaks so highly of him. And I, and I, he cracks me up. Like I just, Keenan says anything, but for some reason, and maybe it's cause I never grew up with like I never grew up with, um, that what's the sketch? All yeah, that. All that or yeah. Keenan Kel. I never watched that either, to be honest. Yeah. Cause like, did you have the Disney channel when you were a kid? Cause I didn't. Um, we didn't have, we had, it was like family channel. That's what like you our Canadian have, version of that. Yeah. And, we had family uh, channel. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't watch it because my brain, I was like, I'm too old for watching kid shows. I got to watch like Same. adult shows like judge Judy or some shit. Like that was like that yeah. weird age of like 14 where shows that were for 14 year olds. I was like, pfft. I Same. watch real cable, okay? ABC, mm -hmm. Fox, yeah. that's where that's where you'll find me. Well, I think that's even a very still common the Canadian kid mentality. Yeah. I think so. Because I was the same way. And and I never I was never into Keenan in the movies. I never liked this character. But now if you told me Keenan's coming back to do a cameo, I would Ooh. be like, sign me yeah. up. Where do I watch? Yeah. I, 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 mean, I like that. Oh, go oh, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I like that, 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 that fun, weird segment where they're like in L.A. and they play those like uh, suburban or no, those urban youths in hockey, like and they learn everything like that entire segment. Like my heart's just going just like enjoying it. <laughs> Stick, yeah. gloves, shirt, like all that fun stuff yeah. and the knuckle puck, which does not work, by the way. The knuckle puck, does, <laughs> no. let's just put that out there. There's kids yeah. out there trying the knuckle puck. It doesn't work. It just goes wherever it doesn't actually go in the direction. It doesn't do the fun fluttery thing. It just goes no. and then that's it. Yeah, it's definitely the wrong way to hit a puck. <laughs> <laughs> no one's giving you four seconds to, get, to set up a slap shot. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. no. the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, cause wasn't the first move. They had the flying V. They mm -hmm. had the knuckle puck. Every single movie they introduced a new superpower. They had the flying V, the knuckle puck, but then didn't they also is the flying V also the one where the kids skated around the puck three times and then he went like that was the superpower? No, that that was a triple deke, I think. And triple that was deke. like Yeah. Banks okay. Banks and Conway used to do that one. If I if is, memory serves yeah. me correct. Yeah, and they didn't they didn't have any new magical moves in the third one. They tried the no. the, the the flying V in one game against like the senior team, and they got like fucking crushed. Like it didn't my, work at all. Yeah, my it was like your yeah your juvenile tricks aren't going to work anymore. Yeah. And can yeah. I can I ask you guys a question? I always thought it was strange that the trajectory trajectory of the series is like Pee Wee hockey, mm -hmm. then they're on the world stage. Yeah. Then they go back to school. Yeah. Like, doesn't it feel like it should be the, two and three reversed? I was yeah. just gonna say, yeah, the progression of the trilogy doesn't make any sense because it's like they are the best hockey team in the world between the ages of like like thirteen and fifteen. But now they're in high school. 
and I'm like, <laughs> mm, I don't know. I'm pretty sure yeah. that high school hockey team is going to get rocked. Get yeah. Well, fucking the rinsed. thing that they like, they, the school saw them perform in the Olympics or whatever. So then they were like, you can get a free ride scholarship to our school. Yeah. But, yeah, and but they I, were, the varsity team is what they were going up against. Yeah. Whatever, and they were Which so I, good. And, I understand varsity's apprehension to, to junior varsity and whatnot, but if mm-hmm. yeah, if a national team comes joins your school, they're gonna fuck you up. I've yeah, played yeah. like I played district, I played provincials, you know, in soccer and whatnot. And if I went to a school where they're like, "This is our varsity," team, I'm like, "I'm gonna fuck." I play fucking nationals, dude. I'm like, you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> I, Get out of here. Uh, I wrestled. <laughs> I wrestled in high school, um, and. They, you know, obviously, if you wrestled well enough to you could eat, it wasn't a team sport after a certain point. You as an individual could move on to like the statewide or the national level, like in terms of competition, if your ranking was good enough. And in our division, there would inevitably be like one kid who was that good. And and he would wrestle you, you know, you wrestle your own weight class or whatever. So the kid would be like 130, but he would be like a national level 130 kid. And if you put him up against the 235 pound um dude who is only wrestling varsity, that 235 pound dude <laughs> would be destroyed Just in rubber. an instant. Like <laughs> once you get into that world stage, it doesn't matter if you're varsity, if you got yeah. a letter of men's jacket or not, you're gonna get crushed. Silly. Because like our our yeah our, our school soccer team had a bunch of like national players like sprinkled in and like mm-hmm. our games for school high school didn't matter to them they would show up when they wanted to and they would play whenever like and when it was like playoffs they would show up but like it didn't matter like yeah. we we you know we won our league who cares we came third in OFSA who cares you know like mm-hmm. it's not like Offsa. anyone ten years later is still talking about it no one cares that the in, captain of the yeah. team you know no, we come in first in OFSA in ROPSA. <laughs> <laughs> in the Robbie Whatever tournament. Other. What other uh, uh, Ontario? Well, yeah. a very small percentage of our audience that's going like, yeah. Right. <laughs> I think even less than before. I feel like it's just one dude who's just like, thank you, and then that was yeah. it. <laughs> Elise and Alan, you heroes. Uh, you guys should do a series together where you—it's the quest to find the joke that only one person gets. <laughs> <laughs> We whittle it down every week. It's like American Idol, except like it starts with a large group and then you have only one person. (laughs) Will you accept this joke, Rose? It's going to be like an Um, inside joke with my family that no one else knows. And then my mom's going to be like, I understand it. And that's it. (laughs) But I don't think it's funny. (laughs) (laughs) I get it. uh, (laughs) I I loved the Mighty Ducks so much when I was a kid. Uh, And I think for me, when I, I rank it among other kids' sports movies, it it might be at the top. I wanted to ask you both if you were going to compare and rank the Mighty Ducks versus the Sandlot, Rookie of the mm. Year, Little Big League, Little Giant. Where do you think Mighty Ducks falls for you amongst those? Or does one supersede? M- Mighty Ducks 2 at the top, and then Sandlot, and then Mighty Ducks Ooh. 1. Yeah, Mighty Ducks 2 is the best for me. That's just like, that's where it, like, yes. it was... It knew exactly what it was doing. Form, it's like the cocaine form of Mighty Ducks, right? Mm. You get all the things you want from Mighty Ducks. Wacky characters, childhood antics, and then none of the kind of despair that I would say the first one carries <laughs> yeah. with it. Like the <laughs> harsh real world uh, stuff like that. Yeah, the the, um, the the biggest problem Mighty Ducks 2 was that he went Hollywood for like 10 minutes. That was it. <laughs> That's right. Eating yeah. ice Gordon cream Bombay with the enemy, big. coach. That was it. He's trying to get his, he's trying to get laid, dude. Like, wait, are you guys mad, right? Yeah. That was it. <laughs> he was just trying to get a connection. It's hard out here. I mean, yeah, it, it had the great trope of like with Keenan Thompson's character where he was heckling them from the sidelines. Mm-hmm. But then eventually they bring him into the fold. Wow. And it's like it's like can you imagine like Alan if you were doing improv with a you know troop on stage and there's someone heckling you from the audience and then you go wait a second yeah wait a second I could eat I could use this yeah. get up get up here yeah. get up here come on you're part of the team now the person just, just does like pisses their un- pants <laughs> <laughs> good sir yeah, comedy very nice Unexpected did you go to Second yes, City and why did you learn this. <laughs> Actually, that is, that, that is somebody's bit. I don't know who it is. Uh, I think it's, is it Rory Scovel? But somebody, 
they would go to these like improv um, festivals and they would legit pee their pants on stage. And that was like part of the joke. And really? every other improv troupe hated them, hated yeah. them. Well, especially yeah. the after. Yeah, because there's piss on the stage. It's like it's, <laughs> it's like it's funny for you. Suit like, and I think yeah, the person who did it, they they have a career in other things, so it wasn't like improv was like 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 they started with improv, but like they're yeah. in like movies and TVs and whatnot. I can't remember the name. I think I don't know if it was Rory, but it was somebody. Hmm. And they used to just piss themselves on stage, and that's to me that's hilarious. So uh. can you imagine if you were with your troop and your whole thing was that you were going to go piss yourselves, and then you you're watching from the wings and you see this group piss themselves oh, and you're you like got fuck well you, you, you got to do the the, the the second rule of improv so if that is true what else is true i'll shit myself i'll just do it that's i'll bring it take it to the next level you do one number one well guess what two number ones is a two so that's 100 percent better <laughs> just gonna say and you have it well i think that's about <laughs> enough time we have for speaking of Corella, Giselle, perfect you ever shit yourself um, on stage thanks for watching <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so happy that we were able to to get your your genuine first reaction to, to the Mighty Ducks yeah. Game Changers, a show that we have nothing to do with. Um, <laughs> yeah, very but I'm, to have you on I'm so glad that it happened here because I for sure thought that you were like, yes, I'm a big franchise fan. I can't wait for the new series. So that was delightful. Yeah, yeah I, I just I guess I'm just not on my. Uh, my movie trailers on YouTube anymore. I gotta get up on that because I did not know that was coming. Uh, I might. I think I may have heard something about it, like on a news article, maybe. But mm -hmm. I just. I've never. Oof. Oof. So excited for this. Nice. Damn. I, and your jersey will be here in time. I know. I'm gonna wear it as I watch it. <laughs> it's gonna be a great time. You wear. You can you watch it while like eating chips, but then also not having any pants on. So you're kind of <laughs> like Donald Ducking in a Mighty Ducks jersey while watching Mighty Ducks. Just duckception. I'll I'll one yeah. hundred percent do that. Please. That's so just how I've been perfect. rolling. Pants? And that's when your your girlfriend walks into the room and she's got her briefcase in her hand and she just <laughs> says, "Alan, I can't do this anymore." Yeah. Dude, go go to do work, baby. You gonna do some work? Well, <laughs> I'll be like, down here watching children's programs. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Is your girlfriend ten feet tall? <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty tall. I, I, oh, yeah. I was like, hey, baby, you know, I want to have NBA player kids. So this is this is this is what we got to do. Yeah. Now nah, she's like, you know, regular height. <laughs> Four foot three. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Canadian uh, regular. Canadian tall. <laughs> any Sorry, any Elise. final uh, final thoughts, wraps on the Mighty Ducks franchise? I'm. You know, uh, it, it was a big part of my childhood. I'm glad it's coming back. You know what? I think they've been making some uh, some right positive decisions in their career. Uh, making these movies third one was a little you know under underwhelming compared to number two but uh super excited about this movie and uh tomorrow's another game thank you uh, thank you so much for asking me that was my nice. hockey player impression doing interviews i don't know why i'm talking you know the joke is really <laughs> good when you talk about what it is right afterwards when you explain it yeah that's a, explain yeah. it don't solid a joke chance to ask you what you were doing mm -mm. like when you pee yourself and you go i am peeing myself because this is unconventional and you let everyone in the audience know and they're like oh <laughs> He's doing it. Improv trophy now, please. <laughs> James, any any, thought, last any thoughts? final thoughts? I just I can't believe I never knew that it was De Deville was Devil, but then I'm okay. also upset that they the subtlety of it is now lost because then they wrote Devil on a car and then drove it into my face. So that's where I'm at emotionally. I I just thought it was French for cruel. A of city, so yeah, that's what I thought too. You. She was like yeah. from Cruel Cruelsburg, yeah, oh. Cruel City. But yeah. we're not we're wrong. Oh well, yeah, that makes sense. Oh well, Elise, how about you? What are your thoughts? I think that if if the Great Canadian Baking Show gets another season, which we'll have to see mm -hmm. at this point in time, maybe there's a third host. Maybe an intrepid Canadian transplant uh, who's looking for any way to get back to her roots <laughs> is brought on. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm really happy for you, Alan. <laughs> I just want to visit the tent. If there's another season yeah. can we, and, and things are okay, can we come visit you on set? 1,000%. 1,000%. All right. I won't touch and then I'm not even the host. I'm like, guys, guys, let's sneak in. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I know where they throw out the food. <laughs> Just good stuff. I promise. It's good. <laughs> Barely touched any other garbage. I promise. Uh, well, thank, thanks so much for coming on, Alan, and yeah. making us laugh. 
Uh, oh, thank you for having me once again. Talking smack at Disney. Uh, yeah. But, you know, again, I hope it does not lead to any tension between yourself and Disney. Um, I feel like you're breathing life into it by mentioning it is the only thing. Yeah, put it on the ethos. The more you, you know? mention it, the more I feel like it's going to become a thing. Well, I'm I'm hoping that it means that the opposite will, you know. Okay. All right. I All feel right, like well, we'll I, Ike Perlmutter, some, is it Ike Perlmutter? Just somewhere. Just like, you know what? That baking show guy. You, you would make a good <laughs> Cogsworth in the live action. Oh, they already made a version of that movie. I don't know. Live action. But we're making it again. <laughs> Not a lot of black characters to choose Beauty from. Beauty the Beast. <laughs> Miss Cogsworth. We already did that, sir. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Um, Fuck. But no, you're so delightful and so funny. So thank you for, for hanging uh, out. Um, thank you. Where, I mean, people can watch the baking, great, the great Canadian baking show every week. Uh, on CBC Gem, and then do you know when it's aired live? Um, yeah, or so not live, yeah, but... so C, yeah, it's on CBC on Sundays at 8 p.m. and then CBC Gem. I think it goes immediately on that thing. Um, when it's on Netflix, I don't know when it's on Netflix. I think maybe like in like eight months or something like that, maybe. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but there's other ways to watch it. I mean, no, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that. But like, you know, <laughs> we are right. having your face there. Yeah, it's just it's crazy twitch. Are there any mm -hmm. other projects or podcasts or anything where people can check you out? Yeah, if you if you like basketball, I, I run a basketball uh, podcast. It used to be a, a video show that we've done for like eight years. It's called Below the Hardwood. Uh, check it out. Uh, we have old stuff on YouTube, and then there's some new stuff on our Instagram, and also wherever you digest podcasts, wherever you do that, it, it'll all be there. Cool. Below the hardwood, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we used so to do it in a basement that was below the... It's, it's I don't right. like, like the, I don't get it. The court? It's a good court underneath it. it. Think about it, though. Oh, That's, do you guys remember the Mighty Ducks cartoon that they yeah. were actual ducks yes. that were things and they the flew their Loved ship out of, the, out of the Anaheim Stadium below the ice? Anyway. I, I recently went to watch it on Disney Plus. It's horseshit, but you know what? I, I love the toys. I love the toys. They're great. I had I like four of them. I'll stick with SWAT cats. Thank you very much. Please, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.